You know, it's weird. I was talking about that Die Motherfucker Die song and how in, in one way it was it was very detrimental to the band's path at the time. But at the same time, um, I can't tell you after, you know, 15 more years, almost 20 years of touring since that song came out and the World Trade Center fell, um, how many people I have just met through various parts of life that happen to notice my tattoo in my hand, or I just end up in a conversation with them and it comes up that served in the military happened to be part of the Iraq war time timeline in our lives. And immediately are just like, Holy shit, dude. Like I, I feel like we're brothers. Like your song was playing over the loudspeaker or in my fucking ears when I was kicking doors in, or I was like, you know, that's what we listened to before we went out on the raid and got hyped or I learned how to fire a machine gun in, in the in the Marines and they told me to pull the trigger to die motherfucker, die motherfucker, die motherfucker so that you don't hold it too too much and it jams. Like the how many people I've met in my life that that song in some way connected with mostly because of the military. Um, it's unbelievable what a positive impact that song ultimately also had in one way it ruined my band and in another way it absolutely created a, an amazing other subculture for it um but uh but yeah well, you're, you're reading my mind with that by the way because i mean you you may have seen from the show i mean we have like kind of a half civilian half military audience i've never served in the military chris obviously has as an army ranger and all that so when I wanted you on beyond just being a nerd for the band, I was like, there is a military. Oh, uh, dude. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And 100%. then the other, the other military, um, I, I guess, you know, thing into the band, I don't know what word to use was that I remember, uh, when that list of songs came out for the people, um, interrogated at Gitmo. Crazy. Also on there. Dude. How do you think that makes me feel? I, it's weird because I think for some people, they'd look at it as a negative and some would look at it as a positive. And I don't know for you. I mean, only you could tell me that. I, I, I'm a little bit of a weird cat. Like I, I have what I would call a certain moral flexibility and it, and it's been, it's worked to my advantage in many times in my life. It's also something I've had to become aware of so that I can like properly make certain decisions to not be a complete asshole but I have a certain moral flexibility. And I think that um, I, I'm not a soldier. I, I'm in no way, shape or form I'm trying to compare myself to a soldier because those dudes are unbelievable and do shit that I did not sign up to do. But in a different life, I think if someone would have gotten to me sooner and put me in that, that position, I think, uh, you know, I have leadership ability and I, nobody outworks me. And I'm, I was really physical when I was young. Like, I think that I would have taken to it, like a fish to water. Um, especially the, you know, like I said, the moral flexibility part where it's like, you're, you know, it's sometimes in questionable situations. Um, but, uh, I forget where the fuck I was going with this. You, you were saying I, you you asked me kind of. Uh, for oh your yeah, own yeah, question, yeah. How does that make me feel? Yeah. So like, so that moral flexibility kicks in when I'm like, well, that's fucking weird that there's some dude that like is on his last leg of life in his brain, terrified that he's gonna die, and they're using my voice to try to get information out of this motherfucker. Like it's me, my tonal aggression is taking this guy to another psychological place. And I go, well, fuck that guy, you know? But then the other part of me goes, well, but I have a soul and I feel bad for that guy. And what I ultimately stumble on is, holy shit, it's just crazy to have been selected to do something so unique and to be part of something so unique. And then of course I come down to like, if in any way, shape or form this helps save one of those people that have volunteered to go and walk that front line to protect all of us well then you know i've done my part the little yeah. tiny part that i was able to do um so yeah i i feel great about it <laughs> by by any chance have you ever seen fahrenheit 9 11 of course so i remember in that film they kept using that bloodhound gang song um uh what, what oh it's called firewater burn right with the roof okay. is on fire and I remember they actually interviewed those guys and they asked, like, how do you feel about your song being used by military? And Jimmy Pop had like such a smart ass answer. You could look up. He was like, well, if something's going to be the soundtrack for war, thank God it's not Creed. That was funny. 
<laughs> that's fine. Yeah. And, and also I think what people need to take into account and like, we've discussed it on the podcast so many times. Like I remember we had Rudy Reyes on who was a part of that generation kill show, former recon Marine. And he's like, we don't make policy. We don't dictate policy. We're just out there to do our job. So when something is done that maybe morally, you know, we don't agree with coming back, it wasn't our decision. Oh, yeah, that's course. not what we do. And that's kind of what I meant with that moral flexibility. It's like you have to be able to do that in order to to be effective, you know. And again, I'm not trying to put myself in those dudes' shoes because I've never done what they've done. I can't imagine Same, the, yeah. the fear, the adrenaline, everything that happens when you got those night vision goggles on and you got a gun in your hand and you're kicking open a door and you have no idea what's on the other side. Like you're bad motherfuckers, dude. So I'm just super grateful. We we um. We, we knew that early on, though, man, like we started to feel it as that song got its own thing. I think the biggest disappointment of it for us was that we watched so many of our contemporary friends go and play those USO tours. And we never, ever could get them to offer it to us. And all I could do was deduce it to the fact that the U.S. military is not going to write a check to dope. And they're just not going to be able to get behind the promotion of bringing dope to come play for the troops, whereas they could do it with seven dust or they could do it with disturbed. But I think that if you would have polled soldiers, I think that absolutely they would have been like, get that die motherfucker die band here now. <laughs> that shit's going to be off the chain. Can you imagine dope flying to Afghanistan to fucking play die motherfucker die to a bunch of soldiers on a base like fucking get out of town. But it never happened. So that's my biggest uh, disappointment of it. But dude, just the amount of people that I have met that somehow that that song helped them do their job for America is pretty awesome. And um, uh, yeah, we even did this thing shortly after that time period that you're referring to, where we did a tour. We teamed up with our friends in Mushroom Head. I remember this. Together a tour called the Music for Freedom Tour, and anybody with a military ID got in free to the show. That was like a really fun sort of give back. And like we went into, we bankrupted a couple clubs, dude, because we went into like South Carolina to some nightclub, like right down the street from a fucking military base. And it was just like, bro, I'm like, I hope you guys are making money at the bar because nobody made money on tickets tonight because this fucking place is sold out and not a person paid a cover because they all got military IDs. But, That's uh, cool, though. I, I think the giving back aspect is important. It's it's funny that you mentioned, though, not being able to do those tours, because as I said earlier, we've had David Silvera on the show, um, who's original drummer for Corn and like great dude. And for some reason, he's like, yeah, Corn, when I was there, at least never played these USO tours. And he's like, I don't know why I would have loved to have. Um, I want to.